our celebrant is Father Manuelli. Please take a moment and silence your cell phones before Mass begins. Please rise. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, Lord, have have Lord, have Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from the least to greatest, shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Popularity. 
Jesus talks in this passage about the ruler of the world. He refers here to Satan. And to put things of the world ahead of God is evil. To put things of the world ahead of God is evil. Not saying we should be reckless and irresponsible, right? Not saying we shouldn't be concerned about material things because we have to be. We live in a very practical world. So hating your life does not mean rejecting your life. It's strong language, but what it really means is putting things in the proper order. Have you ever heard of Dolores Hart? Dolores Hart was a movie star. She gave Elvis Presley his first on-screen kiss. And she was an up-and-coming starlet. If you're not familiar with her story, she left Hollywood. She told the studio that she was going to visit some friends. And so they sent her in a limousine to a convent up in Connecticut. And she never came out. She never came out. Mother Dolores Hart. And she was interviewed about this. And she said, I never considered my decision as walking away from Hollywood. I felt it was more walking into something more significant. And by that, I like this, and by that, I took Hollywood with me. I really loved my work and the people I worked with. She didn't hate Hollywood. She didn't hate that career. I like this idea that she took Hollywood with her into her new life. We have experiences, we have gifts, we have good blessings from God. How do we order them and how do we use them? Dolores Hart sees this path to God following her vocation as something more significant than Hollywood. So what does that mean for us? Right? We're supposed to go off and all join a convent? Well, maybe for some, maybe for some, and if you're one of those some, then take it from Dolores Hart, one who knows. If you're called, the leap is worth it, of course. But most of us are not called into convents and monasteries. Some are, but most of us are not. Most of us are called to live in this day-to-day -day world. So the question is not, do our lives include comfort, security, leisure, good things? I hope that they do. I hope they include all those things. But what is the order? Who is, or what is, our God? We could say, of course, well, of course, God's our God. That's an easy first commandment, I am your God. What kind of commandment is that? We don't realize how easy it is to break that commandment and put things ahead of God in our lives. Popularity, public image, good books, money. Martin Luther King asked, so what do you live for? What is at the heart of your life and your value. Are those things, those worldly things, the center? They can easily become. The world says, yes, they should be. You deserve a break today. Satan says, yes, yes, make them the center of your life, and you'll be happy. But in the Gospel passage, Christ says, please, no, make me the center of your life. You, he says to us, you have a vocation, a calling, and that calling is to come to God above all else. Okay, so then what do you do exactly? What do you do exactly? For you, I don't know. Because each of us is a different person. But I would say is, Look into stepping outside the comfort zone and maybe a shift in focus, right? A shift in focus. It's not so much giving up everything that we have, giving up all the blessings that God has given us, but a shift in focus, right? You've got a great car, you love it, you caress it, you wash it, you baby it. How much do you love it? Can you shift the focus of that thought? You've got a lot of money. And you're happy, it gives you, gives you security. 
Can you live from making money? Can you shift the focus? Money is not bad. It's the focus that gets off. Search for a deeper relationship with God. And how do we use the blessings that He gives? Do we have within us a willingness to value things of this world less? Not to cast them aside, but to value them less, to use them appropriately, in order to value more Him who dwells within us. In that first reading from the Old Testament, God speaks. He says, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God. They will be my people.
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that are eternally, that eternally adore. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you. By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, your spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes, St. Rosalie, St. Richard, St. Wolfram, 
and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Next week is Palm Sunday. The regular weekend Masses will be held. Please remember to bring your mic box to church next weekend. Uh, there are a few changes to our Holy Week schedule, the, the one that was mailed out. Um, usually the uh, Holy Thursday Lord's Supper is bilingual. This year will not be bilingual. It will be English here and Spanish in the community center at the same time at 7.30. And that's to reduce the number of people in the room. Um, Good Friday Stations of the Cross. Normally we have an outdoor station at noon on Good Friday. It, that will be inside the church, so the people don't have to move in a crowd along. So uh, the noon Good Friday Stations will still be held, but they will be inside the church. Uh, there will also be an 8 p.m. Uh, Good Friday uh, Way of the Cross. There will be no veneration of the cross at that. There will be an Easter egg hunt on April 3rd from 10 a.m. until noon for ages 4 to 10. If you're 11, you're out of luck. <laughs> so there'll be details in next week's bulletin. ESL classes provided by POSIs will begin this Tuesday, March 23rd at the Parish Center on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. There will be a second collection next week for winter relief support. And this year, I've got some questions. We will not be having our Easter sunrise mass at the beach. We will not be having that this year. So, uh, maybe next week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.